How are we all online? Thank you. Thank you for turning up for the meeting today. And we'll move on to the agenda straight away. Uh, apologies first. Chair, we've had apologies from Councillor Calvert and Councillor Fox is his substitute. We've also had apologies from Councillor Oliver and Councillor Stukeley is substituting. And Councillor Lubbock has also sent apologies. Thank you. Decorations of interest, everyone. Uh, yes, Mum. I was a member of the public yesterday. They uh, said I wanted to speak today. And uh, I'm not deciding what to vote for, so I'm undecided. I thought I'd just mention that because someone voted for me. Can I ask why the rewards aren't allowed to speak? Um, Marion Maxwell. She's not put representations in on the item on St Margaret's. If Councillor Peter wishes to declare a predetermined view, he needs to do that now, please. No, no predetermined. It's always shown you why she wouldn't be out at all. Um, due to our rules, you need to have made representations during the planning process. That, um, that member of the public did not do that during the process. So there's no record of her making a representation. Very fair one. Let's move on to the minutes of the last meeting. Do we agree the correct record? Yep. Um, Chair, there is an error. I apologise for that. Yes. In, I know, I have to leave. Um, in, on, sorry, I just need to find it there, but I have made a note of it and it's been corrected in the online version. Under item um, Hillhouse Road, where the member of public, um, where the owner was speaking, I have misrepresented, he, he mentioned that something was 50 centimetres, 50, 50 centimetres, that the building control's requirement was to re relocate an item 50 centimetres, um, was 50 centimetres, and I'd put it as 50, no, it should be 50 millimetres, yeah. So it should be 50 millimetres. Well, that's confused me. That's Anyway, that's the opposite one of what's on the internet. 50, <laughs> yes, 50 millimetres is a lot smaller than 50 centimetres. Yes. So I've caused a little bit of concern with my colleagues. So if the chair could just cross the yeah, thank I you. Will the thank minutes you. will be subject to that amendment. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to the applications. And we go to the first one, which is 15 to Margaret Street. And Marie, if you can take us through the report and the update page as well. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, yeah, so this is the planning application of 15 St. Martha Street. It proposes the replacement of an existing workshop to create a pottery studio with vertical workspace and associated outer building and landscape works. So this is the application site outlined in red. It is between St Margaret Street, St Benedict Street, and then got St Swindon Street to the north, and, and that's the Spurs um, into Westbrook Street at this point here. Around the application site, you've got the Norwich Arts Centre, the original St Swindon's Church um, is this part of the site here, and there are contemporary extensions along this side joining us to the Wardian Vestry, which extends towards the western boundary of the application site here. So this is the grade one listed building, and the site is also in the city centre conservation area. On the eastern boundary of the site, this building here is three to four storeys of um, flats, and a similar building <coughs> at this point here that also includes the retail unit at ground floor on the corner between St. Edith's and St. Margaret's. The rest of the frontage to St. Benedict Street here is a mix of different commercial units, some of which have residential uses above. The buildings at 45 to 49 uh, St. Benedict are all grade 2 listed, and then other properties at 43, 51, 53 are locally listed. Between 47 and 49, there's a pedestrian access, which is part of the adopted public highway, and that gives access through to Queen of Hungary Yard, which is this space here. So all of the space around the site at this point is adopted public highway. There is also an area within the boundaries of the site, which is retained those public highway access rights. 
the applicants have made a, an application to the Secretary of State to remove those adopted highway rights on the land within the boundaries of their site. That application um, is running concurrently with the planning application, but cannot be determined until after the planning permission is granted. And if the permission is granted, then no development could commence until that stopping that border is um, approved or the letter is approved. On the plan here, you can see the footprint of the existing building within the site, sort of L shape being wider at the north and narrower along the length here. That is, uh, has historically been used for light industrial purposes, once um, for car area repairs, and is now used by the applicants as an artery studio. There are two, there are the remains of two historic outbuildings in the southern corners of the site here. Vehicular access is under the buildings that cross over from St Margaret Street, so there's the right of access into the property at this point here, vehicles, and then there's also pedestrian access through a gate from Queen of Hungary Yard at this point. So the proposal is to replace that existing light industrial workshop with a building perhaps built to be used as a possible studio. The proposed footprint is shown in brown on the plan here. So there would be a replacement building in approximately the same position as the existing, but 10 square metres larger in footprint. And there would be two replacement outbuildings in similar positions to the existing. The orientation of the plan, we should say, is different to the previous plan. So um, this is the Margaret Street at the bottom of the screen. This is the Medley Street here, with North being in this direction. The red hatching that you can see on the plan around the footprint of the building here is an area that has been included in the application site to provide construction access, and that would be about a temporary fencing around it through the demolition and construction period to protect the neighbouring properties and also some neighbouring trees outside the site. One of the proposed outbuildings, this one here, is proposed to be used to accommodate a kiln. The other building would be used as an office with a store as well. Other items proposed within the application site are three SLT pumps, one on the east elevation here against the boundary wall, and two against the southern boundary wall in this position here. The vehicle access from St. Martin Street would be retained to a loading bay, and there would also be a big store at this point, and within the new boundary to the site, there would be a cycle store at this point here. And the existing boundary wall and gate to Queen Hungry Yard are proposed to be replaced and that pedestrian access would be retained um, from Queen Hungry Yard. This is a much clearer plan looking at the footprint of the proposed buildings. So on the ground floor of the uh, main building you've got just one single open plan workshop space across the ground floor. The position of the west elevation which forms the boundary of the application site at present would be retained and the northern and the eastern boundaries of, of, of the walls of the building would be in similar positions to the existing. Within the courtyard again we've got the, the hill now building here and the office and store here. Those two outbuildings buildings would be single storey with flat roofs that are supposed to have green roofs. The entrance door into the building would be at this point here, and it's proposed that would provide level access into the ground floor of the building. The building is partly for a uh, two storey, so at the north end here, the wider part of the footprint would just be single storey, but over the remainder it would be two storey, and on the first floor you would have this additional studio space. There would be double doors opening onto a terrace on the south elevation at this point and the squares that you can see across the floor plan here and across the roof here are all roof lights which are proposed in each of the roof sites. <coughs> Looking at the elevations of the proposed building, this is the north elevation, so this is the one that would face in the direction of St Swithers Road. Here you can just see the gable of the single storey section of the north end of the building and then beyond that it would rise up to one metre higher at the ridge um, over the two-storey section. To the um, side of the building here you can see the um, 
north elevation of the Goodwood Investory to the Arts Centre, so that is part of the Grade 1 um, listing of St Swinton's Church. And on this side of the building you can see the outline of the three to four, three to four storey flats um, at the Hines to the east. You'll note the um, black areas here show where there's a difference in ground level. So the ground level within the application site is much higher than the ground level to what is a car park underneath the three, two to three floors of flats within the height, and that will become clear on the subsequent slides. The proposed materials are red brick with aluminium windows and clay hand piles to the roof. The red dashed line that you can see diagonally across the plan here is a 25 degree line taken from the centre point of the neighbouring windows. That is based on building research establishment guidance, which advises that any development which does not cross the 25 degree line from the neighbouring window would be unlikely to have a substantial effect on the skylight perceived by that window. You'll see that in some of the subsequent drawings as well. <coughs> so moving around to the east elevation, this is the side which faces towards those flats within the hinds. So this is the single story lower roof section at the northern end, rising up a metre to the ridge over the two story section, with a number of roof lights across those two different roof slates. There'd be no first floor windows in this side elevation. But there are design details in the brickwork to indicate um, and replicate sort of historic blocked up windows that you often see on old buildings. And um, here you can also just see the terrace that's proposed to the south elevation and a section through one of the flat roof outbuildings in the southeast corner. Then looking at the south elevation. This is the two-storey gable facing towards the rear of the buildings at the front of Benedict Street. And this is where you've got the balustrade around that first floor terrace with access from double doors from the first floor accommodation. And to the side you can see the um, flats and the windows within the height to this side. And you can see the height relative to those properties and also relative to the end gable of the vestry and the chimney on that um, gable um, to the church, or the, the church used as the art centre. Then moving around to the west elevation, this is the elevation which forms the boundary of the site facing towards the art centre. Again, single story section at this northern end, which you can see relative to the two floors of flats in the highest beyond. And then the highest rises up to three floors of flats. You can see the top level windows there relative to the ridge height over the two story section of the building. Again, you've got roof lights across this elevation and no first floor windows, but those indications of um, blocked up windows set within the brickwork. This building here is part of the mixed use building that. Um, carries on around from St Margaret Street to the corner of St Benedict Street, which has two stories of flats at this point facing towards the site. Looking at some images which give you a clearer idea of how the building is proposed to look, this is standing within the courtyard space that would be formed between the main building and the two outer buildings, looking at the southern elevation and the proposed terrace across that. And then at the northern end of the building, this is where it was set down from the two-storey height, it was set down a metre to the ridge over the single-storey section here. Again, these are the windows to flats within the highs to the east side, and this is the vestry and the gable of that facing towards the application site at this point. Then taking sort of aerial view in a um, roughly um, northwesterly or from a northwesterly direction, looking across the site. Here again, you've got a single-story um, area rising up to two-story, with the vestry connecting to the art centre building here, and the two and three floors 
of residential accommodation flats within the homes beyond that. And in the background, you can see the two proposed outbuildings and then green roofs beyond that in relation to the buildings um, or the rear of the buildings which run St. Elliot Street. Then come back to some section drawings. These again show you that indication with the dashed red line diagonally at a 25 degree line from the neighbouring windows, which show you at this point here from a first floor window, we'll understand these are all the bedrooms on this elevation. Um, at this point here, taking sections through the single storey part of the proposed building, the ridge would be just below that 25 degree line. Moving through and taking sections through the two storey part of the building, where there's a slightly increased gap between the two sites and the windows are at a slightly different level, taking 25 degree line from the centre point of those um, first floor windows to take that and the original two storey section of the building so it's just below that as well. And then finally another section moving further again through the site um, towards the southern end of the building. Another illustration that at this point here the ridge will sit below that 25 degree line just to remind you that um, this has been provided to demonstrate that the development wouldn't cross that line, which guidance tells us means that it's unlikely there would be any substantial effect on the skylight to those windows which have been considered. One final um, section is just to show you through the outbuildings, and this is the elevation of the kill room facing into the application site and the section through the office buildings, so you can see the height of those relative to label properties at the back of the properties at the front of the Street and the flats within the building <coughs> around the corner to St. Elliot Street as well. So this is the east elevation of the office and store outbuilding that would face towards um, the access from St. Margaret Street and in the background you can see the gable of the original church building used as the art centre. And then the south elevation of the outbuildings, so this is the rear of the kiln outbuilding, the new boundary across the south elevation here, with the two storey parts of the building, seen in the distance beyond that. Again, you can see that relative to the height and the position of the windows within the height of the side. So looking at some photos of the site, this is standing on St Margaret Street, looking through the right of access that the site has um, into the application site. You can just take out the roof of the existing building beyond um, the gates into the site here. So this is part of the building that stands around the corner on St Benedict Street and has residential units above. And on this side, this is behind. You can see windows to um, one of the windows to one of the units there. My understanding is that those flats in this part of the building have living accommodation facing towards St Margaret Street and windows facing towards the application site on the living elevation. And you can see the gates into the car park which exists at a lower ground level under the building, whereas these sites, the ground slopes start across St Margaret Street towards the application site. So there's that difference in ground level from the application site here to the ground level in the car park in the neighbouring property here. Then standing within the site, to the side here, these are the gates that you saw in the previous photos. So coming to the open space that's towards the southern end of the site and looking in a roughly northerly direction. This is the existing building that is proposed to be replaced. In the background, you can see the red brick gable and chimney of the vestry to the art centre building. And then to the side, you can see the hinds, as we saw in the previous drawings, with two windows on the south elevation um, on a return wall to the side with a number of windows and neighbouring properties. Um, across the first, second and third floors here. In subsequent photos you will see the view out of this kitchen window here and also a bedroom window on the east elevation here. 
then this is only just outside the western boundary of the application site. So this is where the wall of the existing building and this brick wall here form the boundary of the site. And again, this is the vestry to the art centre building and the tree within Queen of Hungary Yard sits inside. This is the area which was adopted public highway and this is the gate giving the vestry access into the site at present. Moving out a bit further, this is um, looking at the southern boundary of the site. So here's that gate here that we saw in the previous photo. You see the existing building that's proposed to be replaced. And then the outbuilding, or the remains of the outbuilding at the corner of the site here that's proposed to be replaced in the continuation of the southern boundary here. This is all public highway outside the application site here on the remain site. And then moving further back again, this is down between 47 and 49, St. Benedict Street. So this is the adopted highway into Queen of Hungary Yard that used to have pedestrian access into the site through the gates at that point there. <coughs> then this is moving around to the eastern boundary, standing within that car park that exists underneath the flats to the Hines. So there's a substantial retaining wall along the boundary here between two different ground levels and you just make out the um, eaves level of the existing building at this high level up here and the relationship that this has with the neighbouring flats and the other days at present. Then this is one of those views I mentioned from the window on the neighbouring property. This is the second floor bedroom window in the east elevation of the highs. So this is looking directly across the application site. This is the northern end of the building where it's proposed to replace it at a single storey level. And the roof at this point would be... Um, 1.6 metres higher at the ridge and 0.3 metres higher at the eaves. In the background beyond this, you can see um, the gable end of the vestry again. And um, you should also note that this photo was taken a couple of weeks ago, late in the afternoon, when the sun was coming round from the southwest, and it was shining um, towards this window here. And this is the bedroom, but it's also used as a home office. Then standing at the face of that window, looking out across the side, you can see the retaining wall on the boundary to the car park just at the bottom of the photo here. The eaves height of the existing building, which is proposed to rise 0.3 metres, and the ridge height, which is proposed to rise 1.6 metres, and would be above the height of the eaves to the vestry gable that you can see here. Looking across the site here, you can see um, the tree within Queen of Hungary are there, and then the gable of the original part of St. Swinton's Church in the background. And then this is the view take, going down the floor and standing in the window which faces to the south. Um, this is the kitchen window within a separate townhouse property. This is again looking along the retaining wall between the car park at this lower level and the application site at the higher level. This is again where the single storey section of the building is proposed to be with the, set, with the two storey section beyond that, and you just make out in the distance the view of St Giles Church Tower. And then finally, coming right outside the application site, you're um, standing between St Swithers Road and Westwood Street where the two roads merge, looking towards the application site which is in this area here. In this view you can't see the existing building, but by virtue of the increase in height you would make out the gable of the building in this space here, between the hinds to this side and the vestry to the church on this side. And these are sycamore trees which are just outside the application site except for that ownership. So you will be aware that there is an updates report. You will be aware that there is an updates report. There's one point of correction in the report concerning the height of the existing building. This is 4.2 metres at the highest point, and at the highest point, the proposal would be 6.8 metres. 
There is also an additional representation in the report asking for deferral to the next meeting to allow further time for the objectors to consider the impact on their rights to light and their property values. Neither compliance with the Rights to Light Act nor property values and material planning considerations to be taken into account. The planning assessment of loss of light to neighbouring dwellings has been made in the report in relation to policy DS2 with regard to building research establishment guidance. It is not considered any harm to the immunity of neighbouring occupiers, it would be so significant as to be unacceptable in planning terms. Whether a legal right to light would be affected is a separate private matter. Officers do not consider that any further assessment of the impact on loss of life is necessary to inform the termination of the planning application today. So moving on to that assessment, the replacement of an existing workshop with a new building for similar light industrial use is acceptable in principle. This is a constrained and sensitive site surrounded by residential uses and historic buildings and it has limited access. It is not considered that any noise or disturbance arising from the use would result in unacceptable harm to residential immunity, subject to conditions to manage the hours, the property studio is open to the public and can be used by private artists, the operation of airports, heat pumps and the addition of any new plant. The replacement building would be taller than the existing, this is acknowledged, and it would alter the outlook from windows of neighbouring dwellings and also reduce the amount of light that they receive. Having set these impacts, the change is understood and acknowledged. However, those impacts are not considered to be so significant as to be unacceptable in planning terms. The building has been designed sensitively to respond to the surrounding listed buildings and wider conservation area. It is considered that it will enhance the contribution the site makes to the conservation area without harming any of the high heritage assets. There will be no other adverse impacts that cannot be satisfactorily mitigated with the use of conditions including the minimisation of impacts during demolition and construction. Therefore, subject to the conditions listed in the report, the application is recommended for approval. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Uh, we move on to speakers. We've got five speakers. Yes, we've got Clive eight. First speaker. Yep. So, Mr. Clive, if you come to the table, thank you. And you have three minutes. Thank you. Um, my name is Carl Dayton. I'm the town GP. I live in the townhouse at the northern end of the Highlands Development. Some of the photos from my kitchen window have just been shown. My main concern here is that although there are reassurances in the report that the, yeah, that's, the, that's the lovely view from my kitchen there. Uh, although there are reassurances in the report that the loss of light will not be significant, I'd ask you to take a look at that photo. The, the height of the northern end of the building is going to rise considerably and is going to block off a lot of light and currently entering my kitchen. I, I, I think you, you people have got a really difficult job because you've got to balance the needs and likes of 20 or 30 residents against the urge of two developers to come in and develop the property and make some money out of it. To, to cut a long story short, I would suggest, therefore, that a compromise is in order. And I would say that the, an acceptable compromise to the residents of the Highlands, and hopefully to the developers as well, would be to make the entire building that they propose into a single story, and a kind of true single story, which would reduce the amount of light lost into the Highlands and what is within it. And also give the developers plenty of space to make their pottery studio. Thank you. Thank you. We've got the African American Yes, Chair. Um, James. James, would you like to talk? And you have three minutes as well. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, and thank you, Maria, for your presentation. Um, we purchased our site in 2022 in a state of neglect and disrepair and were won over by the Craggy Charm of its location in the historic yard. And given the previously granted plan of permission, we saw viability to create an improved building over time. At the same time as designing a scheme, we made do with the buildings that we already have and established our quarry studio. 
We've got to know our local community, inviting neighbours or anyone who's ventured an interest to come in and see what we're up to and discuss our long-term plans. We created a presence for our social media and website and put up signage on the gated entrance facing St Margaret Street explaining who we are, um, what we're doing and how to get in contact with us. As a business that has been trading for a year or so, we've received no communications that object to our activities. Um, our proposal works within the same activities that we've already been undertaking as a quarry studio, but they make it possible for them to be more accessible with um, level access and accessible toilets. The creation of a bit more space on the ground floor and additional space on the first floor will help us retain our historic courtyard while improving our capacity for storage, increase our class sizes and allow us to expand on our work exchange apprenticeships and studios for local artists. We withdrew our first planning proposal and conducted extensive additional research amending our designs in response to objections and concerns raised during that first consultation. We have also been clarified our hours of operation, closing to the public early in the neighbouring late night venues of the Art Centre and Arboretum. The height and massing of the main building have been designed with a great deal of consideration to neighbouring windows and late listed buildings, such as the increased roof pitches that reflect more accurately local vernacular where Historic England have deemed our proposal to be of a scale and an architectural design that is sensitive to and appropriate to its context. The introduction of SLT pumps to make our building as environmentally friendly as possible. We intend to make this brownfield site greener through planting in a courtyard and proposed green roof in the outbuildings, providing a calm space for habitats for local wildlife and a better outlook for ourselves and our neighbours. We hope that you'll approve the plan application so that we can contribute to the seat of knowledge of space that connects the local community with art, pottery, and nature. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you very much. Uh, move on to questions. Um, where did you want to make? I was thinking you heard first. There are just a couple of points um, I wanted to raise. Firstly, in terms of um, the suggestion of a compromise scheme to make. <coughs> Building single story, the application before you today needs to be determined as it has been submitted. Um, and in terms of just some of the context of the, the history of this application and the, the longer planning history of the site, um, this application is really submission following withdrawal of the previous application, which was for a more substantial two story building throughout. That did raise immediately concerns and concerns about the heritage impacts. The, applicant, the applicants withdrew that, took advice, including free advice. For ourselves and we decided it came with the scheme, which is in, in some ways a compromise from the original application. Going back a bit longer, you'll see in the history in your report that in 2016 there was a proposal on the site to replace this existing building with a terrace of three dwellings. They were largely two storey in height and had a similar relationship to the boundaries of the site. Although that permission lapsed without being implemented, it was considered under largely the same development plan policies as it is today, and there hasn't been a significant change in material considerations. So, the granting of that previous approval for a terrace of three dwellings on the site does um, hold some weight of material consideration in the determination of this application. Um, and I'd also just um, perhaps at this point I'd like to add a recommended condition to the recommendation in your report, which would be just to make sure that it is used and retained as a light industrial use and not for other commercial uses, which it could be without that condition. Okay, that sounds quite good. Condition. Uh, we'll move on to questions now. Uh, I've got one to start before I made. We've got disabled access getting into the building. Is it disabled access to get into the first floor? No, it's for the, for the ground floor, there would be a staircase and then they would to the first floor. Okay, so the toilet downstairs is accessible for wheelchair users? So you look the same to me, is the top one and the bottom one? It's not shown to be on the plan here, but that would be a building regulation issue as to whether they need to provide that in compliance. Um, for well. Fine, thank you. Uh, Councillor Sands, Sue. Um, can I have a look at the picture again taken from the kitchen window of the Pines? Is there any way we can be shown on that photo 
accepted over the years is going to be in relation to that territory? So, so just for clarification, this is the window in question here, and then the view from it is not that one, not that one, but this one. So what about, can you show me perhaps with a pointer where the, the new roof is going to be in relation to that? So at the eaves level, so the point where the wall meets the roof, it would be 0.3 metres higher or 30 centimetres higher. And then the ridge, which is just out of the picture here, would be 1.6 metres higher at this point here. Okay. So that gives you a better idea about, you know, accessibility to lines. So. And then that's over the single storey section at this point of the building. And then the ridge would rise again another metre, so it would be 2.6 metres higher than the existing further along where it rises to the first floor section. Anna. Thank you. I've got a question about the materials to be used. I understand there was a recommendation to use timber rather than a living parts of the windows and, and different tiles and lines. And uh, you can ask for whether it's something that we have to do in condition or whether it's up to the applicant to say. Yes, so there is a recommended condition to agree all the material details and specifications of what they use on the developments. The application does propose aluminium windows, and that is the same that was approved on the um, 2016 Commission for the Three Dwellings. So we, it would be difficult to resist aluminium windows here, and, and as planning officers, we don't think that's appropriate, but timber would also be acceptable as a more traditional alternative. And in terms of the roof tiles, um, through the, the pre-application discussions that we had, different roofing materials were considered. There's a lot of clay panels around site, and you can see on the image here, you've got several um, in different colours around the site. And so clay panels again would be contextual, as with slates, and the, um, the conservation officer did suggest that slates might be more appropriate. But through that condition, we can consider the precise tile to be used and agree that. Uh, Councillor Prinsley. So, um, thank you very much for your <coughs> presentation and I think the pictures, which were very clear. I like the idea of a pottery close to potter gates. Um, could you tell me a little bit about the kiln? How, how is the kiln to be powered? Does the kiln make much noise? Is there any uh, fumes and pollution coming off the kiln? And what are the regulations relating to the fire risk associated with having a kiln or possibly in the month of these many buildings? Thank you. So my understanding is that the kiln um, and the house in the existing ones in operation, they are electric, they are virtually silent, um, standing next to one. It wasn't apparent that it was in operation um, at a very high temperature. Um, there are no specific fumes generated by them. Within the kiln building, there is supposed to be an extractor fan, but that's like a domestic extractor fan that you get in a bathroom or a kitchen within a house. So it's, it's um, very low level, and that's just to provide ventilation to the room. It's not to actually extract any specific fumes. Um, in terms of the fire regulations, the applicants have considered what they need to do to comply with, to comply with the fire regulations and build that into their design. Thank you. Okay, any more questions? No? Can I speak? I'll just wonder, maybe go back to the uh, photo of the Axios Society. Long time ago. That one? Yeah. Uh, roughly, how tall is the, uh, is, is that? Snakeless? This building site and one about getting equipment in and out. Yeah, after getting that photo, I would say it's between three and four metres high. You can see there is a um, sort of transit van um, which has access to the site and the clearance there. The application is supported by quite a comprehensive construction management plan, which has considered the type of vehicles and how many vehicles 
would be able to access the site to facilitate the development. Um, they have talked about using a timber truck, um, which would um, be the, uh, you know, fit the constraints of that access there um, to provide materials on site. And if larger vehicles are necessary for bigger deliveries, then they would off site transfer them to the timber truck and take them um, onto the site using that. There would be space within their site for a maximum of two vehicles to be parked at any time, or if there's a skip, then there'd only be space for one. So they have thought through those access and parking um, restrictions there. Councillor Sands, Mike. Thank you, Chair. Um, looking at the existing building, I'm guessing, um, I could be wrong, that the uh, roof material is probably contains asbestos. I'm also guessing that all the necessary provisions have been put in place for the uh, safe demolition of the building and any asbestos that may be uh, used in the actual bit below the roof, so to speak. Yes, um, so since the applicants acquired the site, they have had contractors remove its asbestos from the existing building, and with the application, they provided all the certificates to demonstrate that, which is acceptable to environmental protection, so there's nothing further required on that. Okay, thank you. We will move on. The recommendation is to approve, and I'll move back. Have we got a second? Thank you. Um, comments, anyone? Anyway. No comments? Councillor Stewart. Um, yes, thank you, Chair. I think the, um, <coughs> the uh, objector is right. This does always give us um, a, um, a, a dilemma uh, when you're weighing up um, what looks like quite a nice development um, against their needs um, and the potential for loss of light and, and, uh, and views. But I think in this case, the legislation and the uh, the uh, um, the uh, application that's been put before us um, doesn't give us any room to object on planning grounds, uh, so therefore um, I will support this, but sympathy with those uh, residents. Thank you. Yeah, I'm the same kind of way as to do here. Well, I can remember having a site visit here when we got permission for the flats to be built in St. Margaret's bit. So, uh, which is the ones on the right hand side. So we went all the way around the back of this place and, and everywhere. There was quite a few objections to that being built, which we can't look at the long one, which is nowhere you're living. So this is just tidy up this, this place around the back. I think I think that'd be a good asset and hopefully they got a mile the names. So I'll be voting favour. Anyone else? Okay, we move on to the bill, and that's with the recommendation as well, which is... And the additional, yeah. additional one additional condition recommended, um, so that it leads to light industrial and that will have come to releases. Okay, thank you. All those in favour, please show. And that's, Chair, that's a recorded vote, so please keep your hands up until I call your names. Thank you. Councillor Driver, Councillor Mike Sands, Councillor Haynes, Councillor Herkner. Councillor Fox, Councillor Peak, Councillor Princely, Councillor Young, Councillor San, I'm sorry, Councillor Thomas, Horn, and Councillor Stukely. All those against, please show. Abstentions. Councillor okay. Susan's abstaining. Okay, so it's been approved. Thank you very much. And we move on to next one, which is. Who's doing this, Natasha? Did you see uh, Mary in the picture? She's in the picture.
Oh, I'm missing a catch up. Uh, we'll move on to the next planning application, which is Ipswich Rural uh, Car Wash Place. I think I'll make just to clear up. That's where I take my car to be cleaned and washed. I mean, it's very good, but I ain't got uh, anything to do with the shower or anything like that. Share, I record that as another interest. Thank you. The pressure from taking this food. Oh, yes. Thank you. The application under consideration is for a car rental premises at Ipswich Road. And um, so just to note, there's been an update on the updates report changing the site boundary from um, the agenda that was published before. So the site, this site is currently a car wash. And um, what they're proposing to do is to extend the business by um, creating a new car rental uh, premises. The site um, has a few structures within it at the moment, uh, which include a canopy, which is around here, and you've got a few like um, structures here and here, and the majority of the site is pretty much empty. We've got some, uh, this is an area for car washing where the car cleaning services would be here and uh, the rest of the site around here is unused. This is mostly grassland and here this is also just unmade grounds and uh, not really used for anything. Around the site there's also a number of trees um, that's around the site. So with the proposal, the proposal would be to have a car rental and that would include uh, providing a new rental office which would be around here and also the back of the site, this area here, would be used as the car storage so the rental vehicles would be parked around here and then the rest of the site would remain um, pretty much more or less the same and in front of the rental office here, you would have two disabled bayesian, which would be a drop-off and pick-up point for the vehicles. And overall, in terms of the parking provision, the proposal around here provides for 19 vehicle parking spaces, which will include six long state parking bays, 13 formal parking bays, as well as um, you have the two drop-off points here at the front of this site. Uh, here we've got the proposed drawings for the rental office. The proposed office is um, quite a small-scale carbon-like building and um, it would have glazing mostly at the front and also um, there would be cladding around the back and the side. <coughs> the building is quite small scale and it's got um, a flat roof. Looking at the section drawings, um, you can see that the building of the site, the car office, you wouldn't really be able to see from outside of the site due to the trees that are around the site as well as um, the neighbouring property 
which completely covers uh, the visibility of the car rental um, site. Here we've got the um, close-up version of the proposed plan. During the assessment of the application, we received a number of objections, and uh, within that, there was a number of issues concerning um, traffic, noise, biodiversity, climate change, and all of these issues have been considered in the assessment of the application. So one of the key issues that we had to address uh, with this site was um, highways issues. During the cost of the estimates, there's been negotiations between the applicant and the highway authority to ensure that there wouldn't be any harm to the highways and um, increased impact on Ipswich Road. So um, one of the things that has been done here is to improve the movement of traffic within the site. So the site has um, two separate points of um, access and exit. Here is the entrance into the site and here you've got the exit. So what has been proposed is at the entrance there would be clear signs and markings showing how cars would be navigating in the site. Um, so you've got a separate one for rental vehicles and you've got a separate one for vehicles that will be going to the car wash. So um, that means that traffic for the car rental would be able to just come in, go straight here, and then you've got the ramp which would be used to provide access to the car storage area here at the back. And for the vehicles that would be coming in for the car wash, they would be able to just to come in directly and go through here. And for exiting, the car rental vehicles would come, they would come out here, and also car wash vehicles would also be following the same flow of traffic coming out here. So this would be um, properly managed at the site, so making sure that it's clear which way to go and there isn't any confusion with um, how to use the different sites, the different uses of the site. And um, so there would be like road markings and signages installed so that would be quite clear um, where to go if you're using the car wash and if you're using uh, the car rental and also when it's of exiting. With uh, these kind of measures of traffic management on the site, um, it is considered that this um, is not going to cause any issues for a switch road in terms of um, cars potentially uh, queuing up or increasing traffic flows. And um, with the use of the car rental and the car wash, we do acknowledge that there would be obviously more vehicle movements to and from the site with vehicles coming in into the car rental for drop off and pick ups, and also vehicles coming into the car wash, but this generally overall is not going to significantly increase the traffic levels on um, Ipswich Road. It's not going to be too different from what the current um, situation is, but um, with the proposed site layout, uh, this is kind of sufficient measures to ensure that the traffic does not overall um, affect the use of Ipswich Road as one of the main roads into uh, the city centre. And also one thing um, to note here was that there was an issue with uh, potentially the site reducing the car parking provision for residents in the local area. So what has been proposed within this um, car storage area, this would store the vehicles for rental as well as have additional capacity for um, additional vehicles to be parked. So people coming to the site, there wouldn't be any need for them to be parking on Ipswich Road and taking uh, parking from some of the residents in the local area. So all of the parking uh, needs of the site would be met within the site. And so um, with the site being on Ipswich Road, this is quite a sustainable location. 
is is um, easily accessible by bus, and so it's within a walking distance into the city centre. So if you were coming in um, to rent a vehicle, you would be able to get a bus um, to the site. You would also be able to walk um, to the site from the city centre. There is a bus stop just immediately outside of the site. You can't see that here. And um, yeah, so it's quite a sustainable site in its location. This um, is an image of uh, the site at the moment. Here are some of the nearest residents over on Ipswich Road, and this is the site fairly mostly undeveloped. And um, this would be the entry point, and this um, would be the exit. And um, one consideration that had to be had was to do with uh, the impact on the residential properties which are directly opposite the site. Um, we've had concern regarding light pollution. We would anticipate that there would be some external lighting at the property and uh, this could potentially have an impact on the uh, residential properties in terms of light pollution. So um, we have recommended that the details for any of the external lighting that would be used on the site would have to be submitted for us to consider just to ensure that the light levels are appropriate and wouldn't be um, having a negative impact on the residents. So this would be a condition which the applicant would have to discharge um, after and they would submit the details to us for us to assess and then the condition would be discharged before any of the external lights are installed on the site. And also um, security is another issue that um, has been raised and for a proposal like this we would anticipate that the applicant would have security measures on the premises so that would be would expect something like CCTV and alarm systems so um, the applicant is kind of responsible for ensuring that they have applied the appropriate security measures for the site to um, address crime and ensuring that they are deterring um, potential criminal activity at the site. And um, in regards to the opening hours, the opening hours for the car rental would be the same as the opening hours for the car wash. So there's not going to be increased activity on the site outside of the existing hours of operation. Um, so we wouldn't anticipate to have vehicles coming in 24-7 because um, the opening hours are um, limited already. So this would also be conditioned just to um, make sure that the um, car wash does operate according to those um, opening hours. And so within um, the site, you can kind of see how it's very undeveloped and um, the ground surfaces at the site um, are different. And um, one of the issues that we had to address was um, flooding. There is some surface water flooding outside of the site around the Ipswich Road. And um, at the moment, there is quite large parts of the site which are unmade, which is um, permeable and um, what has been proposed in terms of the ground servicing is for the site to be grass -crit. so that would allow um, water to infiltrate into the ground so the area at the back around all of this would be grass -crit, which would allow for the parking and as well as allow um, rain water to infiltrate into the ground and also the unmade areas like here south of the site would um, mostly remain unmade. So I'll just go back to a different drawing. Just to yeah, so here all of this would be grass grit. So vehicles can be parked but also um, the water would infiltrate into the ground. And then most of this here would remain um, unmade just because of the trees here and the root protection areas. So um, nothing here would be done with the exception of the ramp, uh, which would be for access to the private car parking area here. And with the ramp in itself, it's um, 
certain gradient that is above uh, the tree root protection area, so that wouldn't have any impact on any of the trees here, which have root protection areas that extend out here. And also in relation to root protection areas here, because of the trees around here, when it comes to construction, it has been proposed that reduced digging methods would be used, so also that's also making sure the root protection areas here are being avoided and um, there wouldn't be any harm to the trees. So in terms of um, the surfacing materials, the grass creek um, is a preferred material compared to um, using tar marking. The tar marking is not um, valuable and what we're proposing with the site is going is envisaged that the site would be well maintained and this all of this area here is not going to be accessible to the public. It would only be members of staff that would be going in and out um, using the ramp to uh, bring cars out and take cars back. So there would be very low vehicle movements uh, to and from. And also um, the applicant has informed us that they would obviously be uh, responsible for maintaining the sites to ensure that the grass crease does um, remain effective in terms of um, absorbing water and infiltrating into the ground. And with those measures, this is um, a good form of sustainable drainage. And um, this is south of the site. Um, there is an apple trees that go all the way along the boundary, as long as some other informal planting. So biodiversity is a consideration which um, we had to consider in this application. Um, in regards to biodiversity, this scheme will include some landscaping along this border here, as well as at the back of the site. And um, during the application, it was submitted with a tree impact assessment as well as an ecological survey. And um, within that, there were some enhancements which were recommended and this would be applied as a condition. So um, what that means was that within the ecological survey, there wasn't any um, significant ecological value that was found at the site. It was considered that the site in itself would had a negligible um, ecological value, but okay, at the same time, they did find that the site has um, the potential for um, accommodating foraging plants that use the habitats that are nearby. So what has been proposed is within um, some of the trees here would be to install bat boxes as well as uh, bed boxes because um, the trees around the site, they do provide um, a habitat for, for birds as well as uh, First, so we want to make sure that there is some um, provision for habitats for them. And this has been um, conditioned in the report. And also to the back site. Uh, to the back of the site here is just um, informal overgrown vegetation. And in the ecological report submitted, um, they did find that there was a grass snake present, but there wasn't any anything else of ecological value present within the site. And um, as part of the consideration, we have um, considered the effects of the use of the car rental on uh, the local amenity spaces. Here at the back of the site is Danby Wood uh, Park. So with this area here functioning as the car storage area, we would require for some additional buffers and screening along here just to make sure that um, the use of the site here is not going to uh, negatively affect the use of the amenity space here at Danby Wood. So what has been proposed is um, along here with the existing um, vegetation there would be an additional hedging planted 
along here, as well as five trees are also going to be planted here, which would create um, an additional buffer and give additional screening, so you wouldn't really be at the park here, and also having um, views of um, cars parked here, this would be uh, screened. And as uh, part of the biodiversity consideration in regards to the hedging, uh, the proposal is for the hedging to be a mixed species hedging. So in the ecological report, they've identified uh, the type of uh, different hedges to be mixed together and the exact quantities in order to create a hedge that is um, the most suitable as a quality for habitat and allow for um, ecological success as a um, habitat. And in regards to, um, obviously the site would have some provision for employment. With the car rental, there would be provision for four full-time positions as a result of this, as well as two part-time um, positions would be created by the um, new car rental. Thank you very much for that. Um, questions to the officer? I've got one or two. And Chair, we've got, a speak, we've got a statement to be read out. Oh yes, we have got a statement to be read out. Thank you. And, to, and the applicant. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to read out a statement on behalf of the Department of Land Management and Planning. Um, so okay. As a resident that lives directly opposite sites of the proposed development with my young family, I'd like to add to my original objections by responding to a few of the points raised in the report and make some additional points. A previous planning application on the same site turned the land behind the car wash into an overflow car park was refused in 2020 on the grounds that it would spoil the public green space, Gambi Play Park. This spoiling of the green space will be even more prominent with this new proposal and it would be inconsistent for the council to now approve a more intensive development on the same site. Lack of due process. Since the planning application was submitted, a food outlet started operating on the site without submitting a planning application or notifying the local residents. The owner of the food outlet was told to use our home address by the landlord in his advertisements, despite the land being in a different postcode. The food outlet has now been told to cease trading by the council. We are concerned that this exhibits a track record by the owner of the land to skip due process and proper procedure and we're worried that they will not carry out the conditions of planning if approved. Lighting, security and operating hours. Responding to concerns of increased crime in the area, the report claims that it is satisfied the owner will be able to secure the site. However, good lighting is often one of the most effective security measures, so it is likely development will contribute to light pollution through the night. While operating hours have been conditioned for car rental businesses, while, sorry, while operating hours have been conditioned for, car rental businesses often have a 24-hour drop, car drop-off service. So it is likely that the site will contribute to noise pollution at unsuitable hours. Traffic. The report does not mention that the queue for the car wash often backs up into the main Ipswich road. The new car rental business will compound this, making road conditions more dangerous for younger families than the opposite, where it wanting to cross into Danby Bay Park. Biodiversity, sustainability and flooding. The Council should be promoting sustainable travel, such as cycle lanes and public transport. Approving another vehicle rental business will add traffic in and around Norwich and contribute to the city's sustainability goals. The report states that despite the removal of local biodiversity, the proposal will have improved landscaping value. Landscaping is not the same as biodiversity, and removing the grassland will reduce connectivity for local wildlife in the area. The report claims that the proposed development has a neutral impact on the natural environment, but through the removal of trees and grassland, this can't be correct. Furthermore, the report only recommends high diversity landscaping and does not condition it. The report accepts that the Ipswich Road area is prone to surface water flooding, but claims that the grass-root material that will be used for the proposed car park will mitigate this. 
The grass creek will not be better at mitigating flooding than the existing grassland and will need to be regularly maintained. The car park spaces opposite the site are made of grass creek and almost no grass is growing there. I urge the committee to reject the application. It does not serve the local community, will contribute to the degradation of our local environment and green spaces when sites such as Gambit Clay Park are still waiting for promised repairs and is conflicting against Norwich's sustainability aspirations. Thank you for that. We've also got uh, the African agent here, Chris Ray. And you have three minutes as well, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Our client owns a piece of my service station, which is currently a hand bar wash. The former used as a petrol station ended a while ago. The site has existing infrastructure, including a well designed access point that facilitates vehicle movement when entering and exiting the site without impacting the current traffic movement of the Fitch Road, primarily a radial route into the city. The proposal maximises the efficiency of a crown wheel site. The car wash facility will remain, but will be reduced in size to ensure that it still works as the facility. This creates space for a small vehicle rental business, comprising a small single-storey reception building and vehicle storage and parking. Entrance to the site will reuse the existing setup, but will be delineated to separate the car rental and the car wash business. Within the site, a one-way system will see cars exit in an orderly fashion. Highways have been consulted and induced a proper scheme. As is normal, there will be signage and some low-scale lighting required. We envisage a suitable worded condition that sees the finite details that will be tied to highway approval as well. The site layout has been tailored to protect the existing trees on the site boundary, and as such, the stock landscape brings water along the boundary will be retained. <coughs> The western section of the site is currently a no man's land that, that was used for soil and rubbish, but that is now overgrown with weeds and scrub. We propose to tidy up that area and lay grass creek base for the, to store the rental vehicles. On site, parking provisions include spaces allocated for longer term customers. During the course of the application, we have liaised with the plan and agreed, agreed to create a strong landscape screening along the western boundary. Currently, this is sporadic self-own vegetation. We propose to maintain what is there and build a gap with new hedges, shrubs, and to include new trees. The plan seeks to minimise the impact on the natural habitat. While the removal of one small tree is proposed, this is balanced by the introduction, introduction of five new trees. The grass creek provides the landscape appearance and helps with surface water permeation. By improving the landscape, and removing the removal of unattractive debris, the project aims to elevate the visual appearance of the area. The new landscape into the rear will also create a specimen to the glimpse views from the park. We have support from highways and the planning department, and we have hope to have your support today. On one final note, um, we understood that the food bank did turn up on site. That wasn't approved by our client who had nothing to do with it, but we do know that it has since been taken away. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Did you want to come back on anything? No? I have a few things to say. Yes, thank you. Okay, so I just wanted to raise um, a few of, uh, just to respond to a few of the points that were raised and that's taken that right out. Um, in terms of the planning history, um, the objector notes that there was a refusal for a car park on site in 2020, which is true. Um, there was a, 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 what we consider to be a public car park uh, proposed for, for this rear area of the site. There was a policy issue there with new car parks. Um, there, there is a, we have a specific policy that which aims to locate new car parks in the city centre and then to limit the numbers that, of car parking spaces that they provide overall. Um, this would not be a sustainably located car park, it was a different, a different commercial use. Um, we refused it for that reason. We also refused it on reasons relating to the impact on the um, views from the park behind. Um, there were no landscaping proposals on that boundary within that um, application. Um, so this application does better in that regard as well. Um, 
In terms of the um, matter of a, a food truck um, operating from the site, that's a separate enforcement issue, um, not, not part of this proposal, um, and doesn't need to impact upon our decision um, with, with this scheme that's before us today. Um, there was an issue about um, lighting, uh, potentially causing light pollution. Um, NIA's recommended definition, which relates to uh, to the agreement of details of external lighting, which I think she referenced in her uh, presentation. Um, and then relating to the um, biodiversity enhancements, it's um, the, the statement claims that there's no condition that relates to that, but, but um, I just like to note that there is um, a condition which talks about ecological enhancements. Um, which we understand to be bird boxes, bat boxes, and um, native hedgerows. Um, details of those would be required by that condition, um, and they would be required to be implemented at a suitable time during development. Thank you for that. We move on to questions. I've got two or three. Can you just tell me the rate that's gone up or down? Sorry? Has it gone up towards the back or down towards the back? The land levels around the site, they vary. So, the land goes down at the back here where the vegetation is, and then the main part of the car park is on a higher level. If you look here, there's a slight dip that goes into the back here. So, so are we bringing that up or keeping it at the same level? I thought they were making it. Even. Yeah, the intention is that uh, the, the proposal includes the ramp staying as it is, uh, the, same, the same grading that it is. The um, car rental, st the storage of the cars will be on a lower level than the rest of the site. Okay, so it's all down. Yes. Yeah. And one other question accommodation, uh, car termination. Uh, it used to be an initial public carriage. Has that all been cleaned up since then? or? Would have been cleaned up operation first. Yeah, we have um, consulted with environmental protection, and we have attached a condition to the site that should there be any um, contamination found uh, during the works, the works would have to stop, and that they would have to um, dissolve the contamination issue and submit details with our environmental protection. So that has been considered because of the history of the site being a petrol station, there might be potential for that. So we have conditions for that, um, should that be the case. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll go out there, Mike. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, two questions, really. First one, I'm guessing as the building is described as a cabin, it's rather than being a specialist building constructed on the site, it'll be a modular building built elsewhere and uh, brought into the site. And second question, as there may be a need for some sort of security lighting, uh, can this be conditions that's low level lighting rather than up on tall pylons? And also, can it be conditioned that the security lighting be within uh, light spectrums that are not adverse to nocturnal wildlife? So um, all of those details would be considered when the details of the lighting are submitted. That will be via a discharge of condition um, application, so the applicant will submit to us details of the lighting that they're proposing to put in, and at that process um, we will then uh, consider the details that they've submitted and um, negotiate uh, with them if they need to make changes just to make sure that uh, the lighting would be appropriate for the residents as well as um, the bus as well. So that would be considered under a separate discharge of condition application relating to the lighting. Thank you. Uh, Hannah. Um, sorry, so the office, um, I did not see that would be a modular building. Um, I'm, I'm Potentially, it might not be a modular building, but it is just a small scale uh, building um, that they're proposing. It's a small office. It is modular. Okay, so I'm correct. Yes, the building is a modular building. It's not. It's not a modular building. Sorry. That's okay. It makes little difference. 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
we don't have any control over the um, the impact of that in terms of usage. Amanda. Amanda. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Councillor Sands asked well, the most burning question, which was about the effects of lightning on insects. Um, but just on the um, biodiversity studies, so uh, bats and birds use trees in preference, like bats use trees in preference to bat boxes. Is my understanding. Um, so the ecological enhancement of adding back boxes to existing trees um, doesn't seem much of a, an enhancement when they actually prefer trees. Uh, and also, uh, like the biodiversity status is considered, like the like the biodiversity impacts considered negligible. Um, but there's a grass snake there. I don't think a grass snake is negligible. And brambles and scrub provide food for birds and insects. Um, and I don't feel that that's negligible. And replace, you know, putting in a bird box doesn't, well, uh, snakes don't use trees, basically. Um, so I wondered how the impact of um, a bat box improves that. Okay, so um, I think it's important to note that the um, we've, we've had an ecology appraisal also submitted for the application. It's assessed the quality and, and species that are using that, that area of land um, and then made some recommenda expert recommendations on what's an appropriate um, way of, of dealing with this application. Um, the recommendations that come out of it are enhancements, not mitigation. So it's not that they consider that there's going to be harm to biodiversity which then needs to be mitigated for. It needs to impact on, on the quality of that space because it doesn't offer ex it doesn't offer excellent habitat for, for, for species. But that, 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 but, but that we should be seeking enhancements, which we have done by a condition. Um, so the installation, there, there's the loss of one tree, there's the planting of five trees, and, and some native hedgerow, mixed native hedgerow. Um, and there's also the, plant, the, the installation of bird black boxes, which should offer an enhancement over the existing situation. Um, so I think we can feel suitably reassured in that regard that um, the overall impact on biodiversity um, will hopefully be a positive one. Okay. Um, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. I, I too can remember when that was an essay down. I can see on page 53 of the bundle that we've been given that there was an installation of a 25,000 litre diesel tank approved in 1996. What has happened to that diesel tank? Is it still there? Is it underground? It's very likely complications as a result of this massive big tank, which I imagine is still there. Sit chat in front. As far as I know, we don't know whether it's still there. The condition that we've applied um, helps us in that regard because it it, it's a, it provides us with a mechanism for securing it to be decontaminated should it be found. Um, the proposals are Unlikely to disturb the ground hugely uh, because we're, we're not fixed on the soil, we've got the foundation or something like that. Um, it might be, uh, it, so it's, it's, it's possible it's there, but it will stay un, undisturbed during the course of the um, proposals. If it is found or, or disturbed, then we would need to see details of how they're going to be removing it, decontaminating the land, and um, preventing any, any harm to um, yeah, sort of that. Councillor Sainz, this question is to you, Chair. Using your local knowledge, what, um, I know talked about you know, the, the queuing of cars for the car washing in Switch Road. Have you found that to be an issue? And, no. And so you don't think that the added cars perhaps are going to come in and out are going to, I mean. In... There's hundreds of cars you used to go up to this okay, which is going in there all day. I mean, the bit of the bank's always been like that, even when the garage was open. But you've got Derby Park behind that, you've 
you've got Danbury Woods to the left, you've got a pathway to the left as well, down into the woods, you've got two big chalk pits and waste ground behind the park, behind that you've got a golf course with 18 greens on it and more land the other side of that, to the left on it you've got the Winston River Bank and uh, the marshes and everything, there's plenty of other estate to disappear in. <laughs> So I can't see just for a snake being in that area it would make that much difference to me. I just feel that would be a lot better if I was cleared and looked nice. They put five bits of trees in, which is good, you say, the bear hats don't work and stuff like that. But they put five bits of trees in to take one sick of all down. I mean, sick of all about in my life, I think. Just to correct, I didn't say enough in house. Oh, right. Okay, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> it's me. Anyone else? Uh, Kathy Young? Yeah, I was just wondering with the five trees that didn't be planted, um, how much of is there any conditions around um, the size of the trees and how long they will be maintainable? I mean, what are the tiny ones are planted and they, they die quite quickly? Um, what conditions have we or can we impose around making sure that these do grow to be nice established mature trees as soon as possible? There's lots of old trees right there, all along Interest Road and around that area. Well, the town's put five old trees in. They've been there for six, seven hundred years. Um, within uh, the condition, there would be uh, detailed requirements for that like, tree planting season and uh, the maintenance of them just to make sure that they have the best opportunity to grow and to be established. Do we get to say what trees can go in or not? Do we get to say what trees to be planted? Not the sycamores. We, we, can, we, can, we can influence it, yes, and we would um, we would be consulting with our tree protection officer who has a good idea of what, what would be suitable for the site, what would be the best um, the best chance the best chance of survival and the um, the best offer in terms of biodiversity and visual immunity. Okay. Uh, Mike? Uh, I'm guessing that it would be good to put in those five trees at least one or two that are good forage trees for uh, birds and insects. I'm, I don't I'll, don't ask me what sort of trees they would be because I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> okay, since so no more questions, we'll move on to discussion. But first, up, the recommendation is to approve. I'll move that. Second, thank you. Discussion, anyone? No discussion. We'll move on to the bill. Oh, oh Councillor Stooley and Councillor Sands after that. Um, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I think this is um, another finely balanced one for me. Um, looking at the picture we had of the, uh, the, the area of grassland there, I find it difficult to imagine that this is actually um, a neutral um, proposal. Um, and it doesn't sit well with me um, clearing an area of grass um, where, we, where there is some biodiversity. I, I understand it's a small area compared with the, with the whole. Um, it doesn't sit well with me clearing an area uh, for cars, so um, I, I can't vote for this one. Uh, Saint? Uh, sort of similar in a way, there is, with that area of land, it's described as scrubland, it's within the um, title of the whole area, which means the whoever owns it at any time could go in there and clear the scrub from there for whatever reason they have. They'd, they wouldn't need plan and application or anything to just go in there and clear the scrub. I'm correcting that, I assume. There's a lot in done over the years. Yeah. yeah. Okay, no other discussion? All those in favour, please show. Chair recorded vote. So it's Councillor's driver. Mike Sands voting in favour. Councillor Princely. Councillor Sue Sands. Councillor Thomas. All those against, please show. Councillor Fox voting against. Extensions. 
Those, those members abstaining are Councillors Herkner, Peak, Young, and Stukey. Okay, so that's been approved. Thank you very much. Can I just, I see it in the planning for me, can I just wish anyone who's up for re election this year? Hope you do well in May and hope to see you back next year. Okay, thank you very much.